Hello, I'm going to talk today about mobile automation using Appium, Espresso, and XCY tests. I'm going to compare and contrast the testing on the Appium platform versus testing with the native frameworks that come equipped with Xcode and Android Studio so that you can make the best choice about which one is, is good for you. Because making the choice between Appium and native framework testing is not a casual one, and it's a commitment. It's, it's likely for most teams to be a multi-year commitment. So I wanna be able to make sure that, that you have the information you need before you get started to make the right choice for your team that you're not stuck with one approach that you're gonna to have to undo or rethink later because it's very difficult to migrate from one to the other once you get going, even though the net result of testing is often the same. So I want you to make the best choice you can possibly make at the, at the right time. So let's talk about the different types of, of uh, mobile apps that we've got. Wim already went over a bit of this, but I'm gonna cover it just a, a very briefly again. We're going to talk about Appium and how it works underneath the covers so that you can get a sense of, of the, the issues, the goods and the bads of, of what's going on with Appium. And I'm going to do the same thing with native frameworks and explain how they work, why they work the way they do, and how that could be an advantage or a disadvantage depending. We'll go through all of that, and then we'll talk about resources. And then from what I understand, I think Wim might pop in a little bit later with the demonstration of running native frameworks. since we assume that most people have run Appium against Sauce Labs, but um, it's possible that people haven't seen it run against uh, native frameworks. So if Wim has time, he'll give a demo of that. I hope so. If not, I'm sorry, Wim, that I put you on the spot for that. So who am I? I'm the Senior Director of Technology Strategy at Sauce Labs. That's kind of a mouthful of a title. Uh, I used to be the head of the Solution Architect team. So Wim was on my team. Very, very proud to have Wim. He's probably one of the preeminent software test automation engineers in the world. And we were very, very lucky to have him. And I was very happy to have him on my team. Um, but what I did after I ran that team for a couple of years was I got really interested in products like Test Ferry and API Fortress and some other things. And, and, and I tried to get interested in the overall concept of what Sauce is trying to become. As you saw in Ashwini's deck earlier, we're trying to expand our platform to look at more than just functional UI testing. And we're trying to look left and look right and figure out all the different things that we need to do to build by and acquire our way into offering the preeminent test collaboration platforms. And the reason I'm really passionate about this is because I spent 20 years in the QA field and I, I, I became rather obsessed with the, with the fact that the pace of innovation in development, software development. So AWS being offered uh, as, a, as a solution to cloud computing, uh, Docker being offered as a solution to containerization, the unbelievable advances in IDEs from IntelliJ and Eclipse to uh, Xcode and all the IDEs that developers use. Comparatively, the QA field, the testing field that I was in, my beloved testing field, has seen relatively little innovation. It's usually done by a group of passionate volunteers in their spare time, open source. There hasn't been a huge amount of venture capital poured into QA. It was a trickle until roughly 2017 when it started to get noticed by analysts and started to testing as a, as a practice became a bit uh, too much of a bottleneck for companies and individuals to ignore anymore. So testing has become an area of great concern for software developers. And my passion has been to try to help those folks with a testing background and testing bent to be able to do their jobs easier, better. And I, I basically wanna try to free them up to, to take advantage of some of the innovation that I think is coming down the, the scene so that they can spend less time wasted on boring, meaningless tests and more time spent on the things that they are good at, which is understanding how users should use their applications and how to make them better, how to make an overall good experience and how to reduce risk for the business. So I spent 20 years in QA doing test automation, and I've been very passionate about the Selenium tool for 13 years since it came out. I'm the chair of the organizing committee for the Selenium conference. If you've ever been to a Selenium conference, I'm probably the one on stage introducing everyone uh, there because that's uh, that's a part of the job that I, I love to do. And uh, it doesn't it's not that often that people want to do the administrative stuff. Most, pe most people want to sling code. And since they're better people at that, like Wim than me, I let them do that while I manage the administrative stuff. And I think that's a great fit. 
other than that, um, I love my, my family. We hang out at Disney World a lot. Um, Disneyland, actually. Sorry. My wife is uh, very, very obsessed with Disneyland. So uh, she would be horrified if I said world instead of land. Um, I also play the piano and I'm deeply uh, interested in things like robotics and video game development and things like that in my spare time. So let's talk briefly about the types of mobile apps that, that there are. There's the native apps, which Wim has already talked about. They, they natively use pieces of the hardware and software inside the, the device to be able to access all corners of the device that they have the ability to access. So this is as opposed to a web app where you're confined to the limits of the browser. These are native applications that can run the gamut and, and fully utilize all of the hardware within the device itself. Web apps, a little bit more limited, but a little, little bit easier to develop in, in I, I would argue, maybe not easier to develop in, in, in terms of a good one, but in, in terms of the fact that you have a grab bag full of precedents and technologies that you can use uh, from all over the world, uh, then, then you can stitch something together that works pretty well, pretty quickly, because you don't have to write the shell that it fits in, which is the browser. Hybrid app uh, is is a little bit little bit of an outdated term at this point. It just refers to a native application which hosts a web portal. Wim's explanation of progressive web apps was far better, far more detailed, and I refer you back to that recording, that part of the recording, uh, instead of having to to hear my explanation of it. But I think that hybrid, progressive. Uh, there are all sor sorts of different kinds of web apps that combine native functionality with web functionality to get different advantages out of the same piece of hardware. It's interesting to me because there's always this gap between when the device is released and when its full capabilities are taken care of. I'm particularly thinking about mobile devices as well as game consoles where the devices, the PS5, the PS4, they're out for three years before developers even fully understand how to take best advantage of them. We are now 10 years, 11 years, or is it, gosh, it might be 14 years into the evolution of the iPhone. My dates might be wrong on that. But uh, it's taken us a very, very long time to figure out how best to utilize the device. And I think that progressive web apps represent the best of all worlds. So Android versus iOS. One thing that we thought in the very beginning of uh, mobile automate, test automation back in 2011, 2012, when it was really getting started, one of the opening premises that we had was that iOS and Android apps would be developed the same way. That you would write an iOS app and then you would write an Android app and you would be able to essentially run through the same exact test scenarios and you would understand your results perfectly. And uh, as we'll see, as we go along through the presentation, that hasn't exactly panned out. So it's interesting. So let's talk about the Appium architecture itself. Now, if you look at the bottom left corner, I took off my Twitter handle and I, and I left whims in place because I'm essentially reusing some of these slides from his presentation here. But uh, I've made some changes to, because I'm trying to explain a different area than, than he originally explained. But I do say want to say I'm indebted to Wim for originally developing these, these brilliant slides. So Appium is an open source tool. I'm going to read this to you for automating native mobile web hybrid progressive web applications or applications on iOS mobile, uh, Android, Tizen, Mac, Windows, and desktop platforms. So the key is that Appium is the same platform to, to use for test automation on all mobile platforms that it supports. So this list of four, you can use the same tool to automate all of it. The reason that's possible is because of this spider web of dependencies that's pulled in every time you download Appium. This, this is how the Appium protocol gets translated into native events. So when you click something in Appium, you shouldn't think that it's going just, it's, it's, not, it's not like WebDriver in that it's just sort of clicking on an app through JavaScript. It is being translated into layers and layers and layers of different uh, calls to do to perform essentially the same exact click that you would do if you were using Xcode, uh, XCUI test, or Espresso. So it's being translated through layers based on the hardware, based on the software, based on the situation, in order to to interact with the device at that level. And you have to have all of this stuff on your uh, on your machine on the client in order to in order to translate all that stuff correctly, because Appium never knows if right now you're going to be using an iOS device, next you're going to be using an Android device, 
uh, it, it never knows. So it has to pull in all the dependencies. But let's talk about the actual execution of an actual Appium script, because this is one of the most important distinctions you have to understand about Appium versus native app, uh, framework, native framework testing. When you have a test script with Appium, you're writing it in whatever language you want, Java, Ruby, C Sharp, Python, uh, JavaScript. Did I get them all? And every, so, so the advantage is you can write in any of those languages that you want. But where it gets sticky is that every single time you perform an event, which means when you open a URL, say that's the first thing you do, then you look for the username field. That's the second thing you do. Then you enter your username into that field. Then you look for the password field. Then you enter your password. Then you look for the login button. Then you click the login button. Seven commands for a login script. Every single command it does follows these steps. It takes it from the test script. It makes a library call through that tree that I showed you, deciding based on which device it's trying to connect to along the way. It talks to the Appian client, which converts that to a W3C web driver protocol call, which sends that to the Appian server, which is connected to the device, which talks to the XUI test driver, which is the, this is an iOS example. That's the native call that you would use with XCUI test. Converts that to JSON wire protocol into the web driver agent, which will execute that in XCUI test. Now this is the Mac developed native uh, library. And then that is the Apple proprietary method for calling the, the event on the iOS device. So seven commands that we talked about, open URL, locate username, enter username, locate password, enter password, locate login, enter, click login. Every single command follows that chain and then follows a chain back to let you know whether or not the command was successful. Now, the, the trick here is that if you are 3000 miles away from the Sauce Labs cloud, every time you make the hop from the Appian client to the Appian server, it's hopping 3000 miles to that to the, the, the network is hopping 3000 miles and through how, you know, how many different computers and cloud and ELBs and all sorts of stuff to get to Sauce Labs and then perform these five steps inside the Sauce Labs cloud and then making that 3000 mile trip. So it's a 6,000 6, mile round trip for all seven of those commands, including all these layers of translation that it has to go through an abstraction in order to click, click a button, locate a button, then click a button. 12,000 miles, those commands have gone. And it's a big glob of JSON text that's that's going essentially, hopefully encrypted. Let's contrast that to XUI Espresso. It may seem like I'm biased here, but I'll get back to the pros and cons and, and sound and, and, and get back to why I'm not actually that biased. I think it's a very even split on which of these is better. So the thing to understand about a native app test execution is that all commands are executed on the device itself. You have your build agent, CICD, or your local machine. You upload the entire body of tests as compiled code compressed to the device itself within Sauce Lab. So if we're talking about a 3,000 mile round trip, one time you send a big uh, a, a compiled binary up to, up to our cloud. You specify your tunnel, you specify devices you want, you specify the tests you want to execute if it's not all of them. That then uploads that those tests to the device. The device then controls and executes the tests entirely on its own without sending you signal every single time something happens. And then it sends the test results back to you, asynchronous. So you send it off and you go on your merry way and you wait for the test to execute and then you're given the results. It's a very, very different execution architecture. So, Given all of that, why would you ever choose Appium because of the disadvantages in test execution that I've explained? The reason I, I am focusing on the test execution differences is because that's the least understood part of this decision, in my opinion, that I've seen our customers face. That's the least well understood part. People understand generally the other kinds of decisions they have to make, but without that critical piece of missing information, I feel like they're not, they don't have enough information to make the right decision. 
With that in mind, though, here's why you still might want to use Appian. You can use any language you want, first of all. If you're using uh, native frameworks and you are the same team responsible for developing automated tests against the iOS and the Android device, you're going to have to learn either Swift or Objective-C and either Kotlin or Java for Android. But in Appian, you can choose Java and execute all of it in Java. Another issue for Appium is that it actually trails Xcode and Android in terms of uh, development. So there is a team of Appium open source developers, usually funded by companies like Sauce Labs or uh, any number of other other folks. They they uh, they understand. They get the release of Xcode and uh, Android Studio. They study. Maybe they have someone at Apple or Google they can speak to about what kinds of changes are coming down the way. Now, from what I understand from Yair and some other people who are true experts on, on Appium, this is not a big deal. This generally works pretty well. The changes that are introduced into Xcode and Android Studio are available within a week or two weeks or even less. Sometimes you get a beta preview and they're able to accommodate these changes very, very quickly. The only reason I bring it up is because I do think it should be identified as a risk. Small though it may be, it is a risk. Native frameworks, when they release a new version of Xcode, they've already updated all the libraries. So as soon as you get a new version of Xcode, you necessarily have XCUI, the latest version. Appium, the disadvantage, once again, 3,000 mile round trip on every single command. Whereas in native frameworks, all of the commands are executed synchronously on the device itself. Now, one thing that we have found with Appium is that Appium itself is pretty great in terms of efficiency. But we found that other companies, uh, other, other companies who develop tools to assist in Appium development, test creation, test execution, they don't account for the 3,000 mile round trip on every single command. So there will be a lot of commands where it sort of sits and waits and pulls and looks for things and and checks a bunch of stuff and you don't even know that it's happening, but it's sending 45 requests. Literally, I've seen this before in some third party tooling, 45 requests for every command that you send because it's trying to evaluate everything that's going on around it, even though it may not be necessary. So third party frameworks don't tend to optimize them, their, their execution for a cloud execution. Whereas with native frameworks, it doesn't matter. You're writing your code. It's in the native uh, format itself, XUI test or Espresso. You're uploading that to Sauce, and then since everything is is executing on the device itself, with you know nanometers of distance between the components, there's not a performance hit, even if it's doing a hundred extra commands. So you should use Appium if your test team is separate from your development team, and they use a different tech stack and they're culturally a little bit different and they want to keep their language or they don't want to you know, learn Objective-C, Kotlin, Swift, Java. If you don't need to worry about the risk of Xcode and Android changes, if you don't think that ever factors in, because it really isn't a risk except for major releases. And then major releases, my, my fear is that when there's a brand new release of Xcode, it could throw a monkey wrench into a whole bunch of things. And to me, it's just something that we should keep in the back of our minds as we're looking at these things. And if you already have done a year or two years worth of work of Appium and the same team is in place and you're not anticipating a big turnover or you're not doing a big rewrite of the application, if you're still there, there really isn't a way to migrate from Appium to XUI Espresso. If you're already there, in my opinion, you should probably stay there because unless there is a compelling event that drives you towards migration or, or rewriting, there's there's really no reason to do it, in my opinion. Now, that that's, that's just an opinion, and that's completely and totally dependent on your situation. I'm sure we would uh, be happy to provide some advice on, on the situation, but uh, in my opinion, if you already have Appium, just stick with Appium. Also, 
there's there should be a note that Appium for the most part is kind of a closed block box black box testing framework. It allows you to perform commands on a device and then see the result of those commands. Whereas XEOI Espresso actually does let you get into the innards of the machine of the device itself and look at things like battery usage and geolocation, all sorts of stuff and, and tweak and change settings to your heart's content. You should use native frameworks if you are an app developer and you don't wanna learn a new tool. You don't, I mean, Appium is an abstraction between you and the native code. If you, and in, in the end it's using native code. If you don't need that abstraction and you already know the language of Espresso or, or XUI, you should stick with that. Same if you also want developers to be able to contribute to the testing process. And if you keep your test code in the same language as the application that's under test, I think you should keep native frameworks. But that means you're already separating iOS from Android testing. So you should keep them separate and keep them native. If you're trying to shift left and you're not keeping your QA separate, most companies these days, in, in my experience, are, are, are doing this. They are shifting left. They're trying to weave testing throughout the process, not just save it as a bottleneck towards the end. If you're trying to shift left, in my opinion, native frameworks are probably a good choice for you because Appium inhibits developers' ability to an extent to, to get the testing done easily and seamlessly without barriers. And once again, uh, transparent box testing, you, you, if you require fine control of monitoring of the internals of the device, you should stick with native frameworks. Once again, it shouldn't be uh, underestimated if the distance between you and the data center is, is introducing a huge amount of instability, latency, and consistency, it's worth considering native frameworks. Now that said, Sauce Labs is rapidly moving towards a uh, worldwide cloud offering that uh, will remove this problem from existence, but you know, until such time as we are there, I think it, it's it's worth considering the distance. <laughs>